So good afternoon, fellow foundry men. Uh, this is Sandil Kumar from IF Chennai Chapter Secretary. Before we start the program, I am requesting everyone to put your uh, put yourself in mute, and uh, you can also switch off your uh, camera so that uh, we can give focus to the uh, speaker. Okay, it gives me immense pleasure to interacting with you all for yet another webinar, which is being regularly conducted by IF Chennai Chapter to benefit the Indian foundry men. Uh, I would really appreciate the members who have joined during this uh, festival session. And first of all, I would like to uh, give my wishes for Aida Pucha and Dasra functions. And uh, wel welcome all the, all the people who have been joining this seminar. Uh, unfortunately, our chairman and vice chairman could not join. I will take their role and I will also would do the formal welcoming and I would like to welcome all the members once again for the seminar. And as we all know, this investment casting is very, very traditional uh, subject and we are all aware of this subject, but still we would like to touch upon and investment castings. It's it's it's, it's specifically chosen for uh, you know, high accuracy components like tight tolerance and uh, high quality finish complex shapes. These are the main advantage of investment castings. And we have the uh, Mr. K. Manohar sir, and who has got uh, more than 40 years of experience. He's a, a foundry veteran with us to talk about this subject today. Uh, to, introduce, uh, to introduce the speaker, I would request now our uh, council member, Mr. Emma Prasad, to introduce the speaker to the audience, please. Uh, thank you, sir. Emma Prasad, yeah. Thank you. It's my pleasure to introduce the today's speaker, Mr. K. Monoga. He is basically a diploma in mechanical engineering graduate from Central Polytechnic College, Chennai. Then he completed his PG diploma in metallurgy from the same uh, institute, Central Polytechnic College, Germany. Then he done his graduate in industrial engineering and PG diploma in TQM, diploma in management, then PG diploma in marketing management, PG diploma in management again from the IGNO University. He is a certified green belt in Six Sigma Metrology by Caterpillar India Private Limited. He is a certificate, he completed a certificate course in marketing management through Academy of Carrier Guidance, Delhi in March 83. He is having a knowledge in three dimensional modeling using Unigraphics and SOLIDWORKS, use of simulation software for risering. He is, uh, started his career in even uh, Sivananda Cement. Then he completed, he continued his work in India Cements, Sekals Limited, Sri Krishna Metallurgicals, Magnetum Alloys, Caterpillar India Private Limited, Hindustan Motors, Vast Industries. Till 2006. Then 2006 to 2018, he as a program manager and contract basis for U.S. company, U.S. based company. Then. Then he started his now currently is a run a own pattern shop and aluminum hand casting business for two years. He currently is consulting services in development and inspection services for aluminum, GDC and PDC, plastic parts, patterns, castings, problem solving and metrology consultancy for various foundries for sand and investment can investment process. His key skills is ability to manage a steel and stainless steel foundry, either on both sand and IC, development of steel, stainless steel, cast iron, ductile iron, and aluminum castings. Look, now the floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Wish you all a happy Dasara. I am Manohar. So let's go to the subject. All of you know that this uh, Maharaja sculpture, it is made from a traditional investment casting process that is our old Indian culture, which has been developed into the modern science. And the process flow is uh, just for uh, introduction purpose I'm just showing. From the drawing, drawing to 3D model, then 3D model to uh, wax dye, then wax pattern, that is, pattern is made from using the Wax press, then this pattern assembly and pattern coating, slurry coating, primary coating, secondary coating, and shell drying, then de waxing and firing the shell, 
then poor intercastings, then knockout, and fettling and inspection. These are the general process steps involved in industrial casting. Sorry. So, the casting is near mixture, very near to the finished component produced and can be cost effective for producing complex geometries, but it will be difficult to produce with any other process. Machine experiments are very less or nil, depending upon the finished requirement. So, at the same, any alloy you can cast with the investment process, and the dimensional accuracy ranges from plus minus 0.13 to 25 mm. And my finish surface finish 1.3 to 3.2 micrometers. And this process can done for mass production. You know that lot of lot of milk components are produced in investment casting with the near dead shape, including SG iron and uh, non non ferrous metals. One the limitation in the process the dimension control difficult in bigger parts. And cost of dye making and uh, process cost will be more. The application of this casting, you know, in all the fields, uh, starting from aircraft to walls, jewelry, hand tools, guns, and small ornaments. Mostly used in guns also in uh, armaments, electronics, radar, and electrical equipments everywhere. The process steps we already discussed. The design part of it, mostly the people just do the drawing, then we are for finding difficulty when we are developing the casting. So, this just for guideline when we are accepting some lines or parts, and also for the buyers, have this concept in their mind when they are designing the components. That the design requirements it is given here. Minimum wall thickness can be made of 1.8 mm in carbon seal, in stainless steel up to 1 mm also can be done, stainless steel and aluminum S3 in the series. And plant plastic radius they given. Minimum radius requirements also they are shown, but most of the things are not getting the minimum radius in different states. E waste can be made in as cast. Some blind holes can be made. And even though small part no need to drop, but bigger parts we need a drop that is 0.1 mm per 25 per 25 mm. But it is more in sand casting and other process. So that is the advantage in investment casting. And dimensional drop is possible in investment casting are angular plus minus 1.5 degree and parallel descent 2 degree. The surface is already told. Descent can be make sound casting. We need a fillet radius and sharp radius should be avoided. And wherever Based on simulation itself, descent changes can be considered as per from the requirement. See, I am going to take today only maximum on the test record in investment casting process because most of the foundries they are lacking testing or process control. So I am going to cover today the most of the test requirement is required in the investment casting process. They are all the process steps and just going to cover what the test to be taken by step by step. Test for wax pattern. That is uh, for the wax. Wax are used for the pattern making. Viscosity. That, that is the bracket we are given as what is the standard that applied for the particular test. Ash content, congealing point. Melting point, penetration test that is hardness, and color of the wax, and mechanical strength, contraction rate, expansion rate, and rheological properties. And we go, just go through by the what are the tests, by how they are doing, what is the necessary of that. The discharge is a measure of liquid resistance to flow, how thick or thin the fluid is there. Measuring wax viscosity will allow to make an assessment of lot to lot consistency. We are, then we know different batch we are making. 
so we need to maintain the consistency so we have to measure and see the consistency then only you can get a proper wax pattern if the viscosity is not maintained the wax viscous proof the more viscous proof will crack and it will lead to swell crack during de waxing and low viscosity will deposit the filters then it will affect the surface finish the ash content the ash content mostly people follow here 0.5% max but as per standard what they are saying 0.001 0.01% for new wax and declared wax it is 0.05 0.08%. This foundry people should consider whether they are able to control this or not. It is better to control within this limit so that you will get a defect free castings. Most of the time we get a wax defect. When we are using recycled wax, there is a chance that the recycled wax is used in runners. When we are doing autoclave relaxing, the runner wax can mix with the pattern wax, so it's take care to be taken and we have to go for fresh wax only always run out possible for doing very accurate or precision parts. The congealing point that's for the test purpose only. The melting point, the melting point of the wax so that to fix a melt composition and fix the melting temperature for the wax part. Then slurry binder test. That is for the whatever the binder we are using. That is most here. I'm going to cover only colloidal silicate, not ethyl silicate. So colloidal silicate is the binder we are using in investment casting. For that, what are the test preliminary tests we require? That we are going to discuss. It is for the SiO2 content, pH, specific gravity. Particle size, appearance, smell, viscosity, and bacteria content. These are the tests required to be followed in foundries for the binder oil. Minimum 30% silica content is stable, easy for shipping without drilling. Other cases, 22% to 40% the SAO2 concentration are available based on manufacturing specification. Lesser the SAO2 content, lesser the strength, higher the SAO2 content. It is costly and also the strength is more. When the higher the strength, then it is difficult to knock out. Then pH. The pH for the SiO2, the sodium silicate should be within 9 to 11. That is for stability and better bonding properties. So to stabilize the pH, addition of 0.5% soda, sodium helps stabilize the colloidal silicate. The specific rate should be 1.2 to 1.22. Then particle size should be 7 to 12 nanometers. All this can be verified from the TC, no need to test. But these are the things that we have to look into when we are buying the binders. The appearance should be clear, milky white, no foreign particles. Smell, there should not be any smell. Viscosity should be checked once in a while, or you can base on the supply certificate. Storage should be dead, batch number, and it should be first in and first out system should be followed. Bench life for binder is one year, but some found this specially for six months. They don't want to store more time due to their practical experience. Then slurry testing methods, how to test all the about test, it has been explained here. I think you don't need to go and elaborate, but just I'll touch up on the high important points only. This pH control is important. The pH is affected because of the following points. That is, pattern cleaner, soap solution, the electrolytes, the bacteria, low strength and high strength binder solid, mixer, holding and shear rate. If wax dipping is not done for long time, evaporation takes place. For evaporation loss, add water. Solid is produced with a color silica record, monitoring and maintaining pH in a range, preferably between 9.3 to 10. So that you will get the stable colloidal silicate. For pH measurement, it is suggest to use the pH meter instead of using pH paper. And pH can be adjusted by using ammonium hydroxide 
for potassium arrhythmia, but ammonium hydroxide is preferable. Both are advantage and disadvantage. When handled properly, aided metal can be used. And the adjustment to be bring slurry pH in the higher range should be done in two or more steps rather than in one large step. That is the advisable step in that. And next one, slurry viscosity. Discuss the measure of measurement of fluids resistance to flow. The slurry viscosity is used mainly to find how much slurry will be deposited on the wax pattern or previous dips. Operating outside of the target viscosity range could result in variation shell thickness. If the backup viscosity is running thick, then the mold weight could be increased by 10%, especially in that latter dips. If the viscosity is below the wire limit, that could result in a thinner slurry layer and potential failure including runouts or surface finish defects or crack or failure while pouring. So this casting control is a must in a investment casting process. And we have to train the operators to check the discussion in a proper way to avoid any variations while they are measuring with, so that they are controlling within the range. So this is the standard ASTM 84212 suggests what is the viscosity measurement, how to do that test. The people normally use viscosity John Cup 4 and 5. John 4 comes for backup and 5 for primary coating. And they use the two second range. And for manufacturers and the laboratory purpose, people use Brookfield discometer, not the John Cup. And addition of water to maintain the viscosity continuously because the water in the binder is evaporates when it is when it is stored and operation. To maintain the viscosity and to avoid binder silica level from becoming too concentrated, to give optimal performance, it is recommended. Use display water to and uh, add to raise the pH about 9.3 to 10. And other test is plate weight, plate weight measurement. This consistency of the plate weight characteristic yield more consistent shell and provides better control over shell weight. So because the shell weight is important for the cast purpose and also for the cooling and the shell breakage or uh, knockout properties. So it is um, uh, once in a while you can check so that whether the shell thickness is coming uniform or not. So that is the test where we can confirm through plate weight measurement. Then binder solid determination, refractive solids, higher the solids in the mix, shell will be brittle. So lower the solid, shell will become weak. So then you will have a leaks and a run out or bulging of shells. Slurry specific gravity. The specific gravity of the sample is affected by temperature. A warm sample will expand slightly, so a lower density may be recorded for instant. So it is important to carry the test under same conditions or control environment. The constant binder silica is an indicative of effectivity built in the particle. This is in long slurry life and very reproducible results. So that's why slurry specific gravity investment is an important thing. And permeability are moles. So you know that in uh, permeability is important in all the process, whether sand casting or uh, shell molding or uh, other process to uh, drive away the internal gas and uh, avoid any air related defects. And also for removing cold shed and non fill. It can also allow for wax to expand in the shell during de wax, reducing the shell crack. So, more the permeability, de wax will be easy without any crack. 
to get a better permeability they suggest use of minimum 300 mesh zircon floor for prime coat then uh, 200 mesh secondary mesh sand for uh, secondary coating and then you can go for a 3080 stucco then other stuccos so these two primary coat and secondary coat will enable to give you a better permeability the so lower permeability means leading to unfill of the casting hard tear of castings and difficult to knock out these are the difficulties we are not having proper permeability permeability test there are two way of measuring the test that is as per bs1902 that is using a ping pong ball the other one is our regular sand casting sample but sand casting you make a circular tube here it is a hollow tube made up as shown in the sketch the tube is made by coating and it is tested in the same way what is we are testing in sand molds using this equipment and this is the test mold sample for permeability because many of the people don't test the permeability this just i am highlighting that they can practice so the pre firing of the sample should be 700 to 1020 centigrade and permeability is increased up to 8 cores after that it is started going down so it is suggested to go for 8 cores in the normal cell production where are possible maybe a lesser weight casting heavy weight casting normally people go for even 12 14 also to have a shell thickness and some found is you intermediate prime coat or secondary coat that prime coat is reduced by 30% of the permeability so it is not advisable to go for the intermediate prime coat and there is no improvement in strength also that's what the study says so different strength and to have a better permeability use of fixed silica is good compared to zircon floor the other mechanical test that is mor modulus rupture test that is to think, test the compression strength of the shells these tests also only few funds are doing in export and uh, different parts many of the founders are not doing this shell test this mechanical test they can try to practice this so there are three point tester and four point tester so you can go for three point tester that is sufficient so design mor that is we can find adjust the shell number of shells or coating thickness like that this one is slurry coverage test this slurry coverage is a plate is dipped and checked what is the coating thickness it is getting from that it is used for cast estimation it's not the regular thing are not required for regular production purpose binder shell test or accelerated gel test it it gives the cell life or the stability of the shelf life of the binder the simulation of bacteria so in the slurry is binder uh, that is the coating material is told after mixing so there is a chance for bacteria pick up and the bad smell will come so that is to be avoided in slurry storage so what is the source a uh, bacteria build up this is given here wax pad for three times soluble wax and leak rinse tanks viscosity cup fragile storage da water diesel water wherever you are using this storage area these are the source for bacteria growth but bacteria can be eliminated by bleach or adding a biocide bleach is have to kill the bacteria but addition of bleach will reduce the slurry life cause additional metal mold reaction so it is uh, 
to be used very rarely, not to be a regular practice. And it also reduces the efficiency of the other slurry additives. So we should control use of bleach to control the bacteria. It is better to identify the source of bacteria and control it instead of going for uh, biocide or uh, bleach. So the following of the test which we use for slurry control. Slurry control test and frequency. Binder solid two to three times in a week or at least weekly. Then pH daily. Binder viscosity two times in every shift. Slurry temperature daily. Density two to three times in a week. Slurry control through record, register or log, it should be maintained. Other test for slurry can be followed are anti foam, wetting test, once in a ship, polymer test, shell drying, handle meter available to find, moisture, dry condition, tested by feeling, process control in the shell, shell coating area is to control of humidity, viscosity, binder solid, pH, density, and visual check for cracks. These are the process control points in coating area. And related to slurry coat. The next, the stucco materials. Stucco materials are the refractory materials like alumina, alumina silicate, molecide, kyanite, silmanite, zirgan, etc. Produced by calcination, firing at 1000 to 1200 degrees centigrade. Properties required for a coating materials are its density, its sieve analysis withstanding of thermal shock, chemical composition, refractiveness, PC. Test for calcination, that is whether it's properly calcined or not, you can test it by eating that sample and see the color. If it is calcined, it will have white color. If it is not, then it's not calcined. More than 20% particles show color, then it is not fully calcined. See analysis. The same thing is what we are doing for our sand foundries. Same thing, but only thing here, grain size vary from 300 mesh to 20 to 40. So different materials you have to test depending upon the requirement. Same procedure and same thing what we are doing in other foundries for sea analysis. And there are the materials. Standards is for various testings in the, this one. Zip ground. Sand specific gravity 4.6 and ASM 4212 standard test method for viscosity, ASM C24 standard test method for polymetric cone equivalent, PCE for the refractory materials, ASM C1099 for modulus of structure, standards used for wax. ASM D482 for ash content and show on this test. Melting point D127 color and attraction test ASM D1321 and viscosity flash point. Casting problem standards used in the investment casting process are IS3116 and IS8062 general dimensional tolerance and BS. One double line final for visual inspection of investment casings. So then we'll go for the practical guide for investment casting process. Some of the things which when I'm developing investment casting for my company in various foundries in Gujarat and in Punjab. So I run through some of the practical points which I thought it is useful for viewers. So first we have to see the feasibility study, whether the component selected is feasible in our process within the capacity, that is the press capacity, the coating tank capacity, dye handling facility. What happens sometimes, some point is say we take this component. When we go with the dye, then there is a problem in either the batch pattern dye itself, 
are handling up the such a big die or pouring up a big castings. So small casting is not a problem, but when we develop some bigger casting, we face some problems. Even the level capacity, they have a 20 kg, 30 kg tail, some of the quantities, when we need 50 kg, 60 kg tail, there is no facility available. And the person does not have a similar experience in developing bigger components, they need a problem. So all these things, as these points I mentioned as a buyer, I mentioned these are the difficult what I am doing. Same thing that as a founder person, when you are accepting or considering a new part development, you should think of all these points. Handling facilities and knockout facility. Again, when we are doing threatening, there is no handling facility, no suitable grinding facility like that. So then die making considerations for making a dice, what are the constraints that be taken into fine? If some form, most of the things, the buyers change the dice from one phone to the other phone, day, the phone is simply take the die and start doing that. So they don't inspect, they don't see the suitability or the condition of the dice. So all this lead to rejection of the casting, then they are realizing the die is a problem. So die inspection is important. And I am not elaborating in much, only the practical points what the, uh, due to die, I am just touching on that. In IC shells, they are very sensitive to sharp edges, that's like a billion core effect. So those kind of sharp edges should be filled. If the drawing is not given, then you have to ask for the deviation or approval to maintain minimum radius. Otherwise, we will be landing into surface shrinkage and shrinkage on the joints, that's a sharp edges. And tooth in ceramic shells, somewhere it is coming due to coating or the design, then that also acts as a William core in the in-between section. That particular portion then will not have a sound casting. Always see the filter that is made adequate to the section concerned. And this is not to see the customer also the die makers are not aware how much radius where to give. Then the foundry person should involve in die design and die maker. See that their dies are made with the proper Filler radius and common radius. These are the important things in die making. Apart from the dimension design of the component or die. And for high volume production, some points which I come across, I thought I can share with you. Dice are anodized on working phase to have a mirror finish and for high volume production. Unlike just simply aluminum dice in other field. And we have to make proper templates, gauges, and check to check the wax patterns of the injection or when they are in the storage to avoid wattage, wind, bulging, so that we have to plan and during the development stage itself what are the wax pattern storage system methods and how to check. Plan dice similar to coining dice to avoid bend and the, the excess steps, everything is coming in the wax pattern. And in case of high volume, then you can plan for a brass or a steel use piece to have a better life and uh, avoid one out instead of aluminum use piece, aluminum dies. And the pouring cup and runners, getting system and wax steels should be made along when they developing the die itself for the particular part so that productivity can be increased and you need not to search the suitable gating and runner after developing the company. It should be made along with the die itself. So for that first you have to decide the gating design and the gate connection dimensions and risering system or uh, tree assembly system. Ensure that then you go for the correct size of the down screw or the runner and the in gate connections. What they say the gate connection. And it is also suggested to make the integral neck or gate connection so that you can avoid operator mistake and mistake due to neck dimensions leading to shinkage or other related defects. And also it will help 
to fix a particular specific distance between the wax assembly, that is uh, wax patterns. They have a proper coating thickness and the cooling area without touching the job, the shells. And also it is important to make a die gate when you are planning for a tilt position, that is instead of assembly in a one uh, parallel to the surface or vertical, and you want to assemble in an angular fashion, so for, for some particular parts, for a better feeding and also for de-waxing purpose, then in that kind of uh, situation, if you fix the die gate, the uh, operator can easily follow the <coughs> assembly without any change in your expected uh, position. And, uh, and also the chills, what we are using in the wax injection when they're making wax patterns, the chills also should be designed suitable to the particular job along with the dye itself, so that when they are injecting that wax, the same chill will also come and it can be used along with that without searching or preparing the wax and not suitable for this particular job. So this wax uh, dye should be considered for chill pattern also. And uh, one more thing in the dye design, when some of the customers want as cast, they prefer as cast holes without seeing the difficulties in investment casting. Foundries also sometimes accept and we land into the smaller holes cannot be filtered and the holes cannot form like that. So that kind of thing we should explain to the customer and avoid accepting as cast holes in some of the jobs. It lead to PCD variation and due to band and different to PCD and ID, OD. In, in that condition, then it is preferred to go for the solid and let them drill. The customer can drill or we can machine and supply. So die identification, that die numbers, loose fish numbers, everything should be there. So in, here, in the development, die inspection, then after is a must. In the die inspection department, what I am suggesting here is, not only we have a pattern in, uh, die inspection or a pattern inspection, then we go for separate wax inspection report. Then the casting will report. My suggestion to combine all that in one sheet so that you have the side by side the die dimension, then the wax dimension. Then we know where, whether the wax is taken the same contraction, what we are given in the die or not. And some of the, even in wax like castings, there is a difference in contraction depending upon the configuration or length and width of the job. Or in between some opening, then the contraction is not taking place then that will lead to the same variation in the casting also. So it is better to have the side by side reporting of dye, wax, then same page you can write the casting instruction so that we can compare where the variation is coming, whether it is from the dye or due to wax or due to differential contraction due to the geometry of the component. It is a must. Then it is easy for us to do a proper calculative action based on the geometry and the root cause of the problem. And in uh, some of the components, we assemble two, three wax patterns to form a single component. That kind of situation, the dye inspection should be such that the matching should be pakka without any gap or any the fins which will lead to additional fettling or cleaning operation during assembly stage. So for that we should insist the die maker to do blue matching for the matting components and ensure that the wax pattern is very clean without any gap and any tissues in the parting lines. Otherwise this will lead to uh, a line marking, it looks like a crack in the final casting or extra fins which is to be filtered or removed 
either in the fettling or in the wax assembly stage. And the die should have mistake proofing system whenever we are having multiple cavities and uh, with a lot of uh, loose piece and uh, assembly of two, three parts. And a lot of the people do punching A, B, or DAS. Instead of that, there should be a mistake proofing, dovetail guru, or size variation in the loose piece, dovetail matching areas. These are the things to be considered when we are doing dye design and dye inspection. And we should do the dye audit also when the high volume, there is a possibility of dimension variation due to long life. So then we, have, we should have a in between dye audit to ensure the dye life and should keep a record. In sample development, we know all that other distinct dimension, infection, visual, everything. Here, what I want to emphasize here, especially in sample development, when castings are subject to ND tests like radiography, then those castings should be properly inspected before sending to radiography and note down where is your gate position, where is the, whether it is in the top, top side or bottom side, necessary you can mark it or take a photograph and give you to ready a refer and also ensure that there is a visual defect or visual marks on the cast which will even minor line marks or small pins will see in the ready a film then it will confuse whether it is a defect or it is due to the dye itself so then it is better to inspect the proper casting before it is going for rt that is a very important thing And in wax patterns, it is suggested to use 100% fresh wax or virgin wax for dimensional consistency and free from ash defect for high volume and very precision parts where there is no minor defects are not acceptable. And normally found is used mix up recycled wax with the virgin wax and they go for simply this cost effectiveness, but it is for high pressure and high volume this adversity. And when we are de-waxing, the de-waxed wax should be completely dehydration should be allowed. Otherwise, the water in contained in the wax will expand and will give to gas problem in the castings. The crack in the shell also. And the, some of the points due to pattern wax, that is wax pattern process, just I'm just I'm sharing. The pattern dimensionization are due to improper cooling of wax pattern. See the pattern after the injection, normally people put in the water. Sometimes they are not put up due to size or some other reason. Then also due to lesser dwell time based on the job. Then shrinkage and surface sink due to high temperature of wax or not giving proper dull time, then warpage that is due to geometry of the job or improper storage practice, change in wax composition that is an important point in a investment casting process because when you change the wax either supplier or a batch then we have to check first the stability of the uh, wax or the dimensions we get from the same wax the repeatability is there or not from the previous batch to the next batch. It's always better to check the first pattern from the new batch, confirm the dimensions. So it is better to make trial it, even check the pattern dimension and also the cast dimension. In some cases, this happened. The wax dimension is okay, but in casting, it is varies because of the wax composition. And when you are storing that some of the jobs, especially some holes or round jobs, there is always possibility of warpage. 
So you can think of in, using inserts in between the gaps and use of tie rods or use of uh, welding fixers to match the same size, the shape of the component to avoid warpage and bend. And the pattern also should be inspected regularly on a shift wise or on a sampling basis to ensure that consistent dimension in the bulk in case of high volume production. Then assembly of patterns, wax pattern assembly should be convenient for coating, de-waxing and de-shelling. So that is the criteria for uh, wax assembly. In that, that is one job orientation in the assembly. Assembly position, orientation of your path is decided based on a getting sound casting, no underfill or cold lines and complete de-waxing. These are three criteria. That is one soundness, then the, there is no visual defects, until etc. The third important thing is the de-waxing. When we are doing de-waxing, the component position should be such that all the wax get drained through the gate. If that is not possible, then we have to go in for a adding. They call wax drain, or it can be also used as a vent to have a better permeability. So the wax retained shell is more in vertical gate assembly compared to horizontal gate assembly. So and the, the difference also seen in vertical gate assembly. By changing the wax pattern position, yield also improved and defect also get reduced. So that we have to decide before we are going for assembly position. So this point we only cover draining, wax drainers. Then apart from the wax drainers, we should also have vent in the top most point that is for the incoming gases to come out and also the wax it act also act as a wax drainer where there is no drainers are kept in based on the simple shape or size of the casting the tilt assembly we discussed we have a sound casting the tilt assembly position is decided whether horizontal vertical or tilt so in some of the castings, we have a better yield and quality by doing a tilt assembly. Some of the defects are eliminated when you are doing a tilt in assembly. So that is one. Then the pillar radius we discussed in the die design. If you are giving proper radius in the pillar radius and sharp corners, then we are avoiding internal corners, then it is improving the visual uh, shrinkage effect or visual sink in the castings. And spacing between patterns also we dis discuss in the assembly. So that is a must for have a proper cooling area. And the, some of the alloys, when the shells are there is no, no proper spacing or no air gap, then metal mold reaction is taking place in some particular alloy. So it is a must to have a proper spacing between the assembly parts in the tree assembly. And also the spacing is required to have a proper feed metal through the runner for the particular component. Otherwise, the chance of shrinkage, if there is no proper space to have a feed metal from the runner. And inspection of the assemblies. So normally we found this go make a sample and prove then they say the operators do the assembly they even though they give some sketch there is no proper assembly is happening in some people uh, some of the parts which is leading to some rejection or rejection only people realize where the mistake is happening so for that reason like inspecting the wax patterns or casting we should also inspect the assembly wax assembly for whether they are properly used the riser size, runner size, and the in-gate gating size, and proper location of the veins, all that. In one case, the body, the operator is not kept the proper height of this riser, then it was leading to shrinkage. In the sample, it was okay because they kept the proper length as per the design, then afterwards, nobody is checked. So it is leading to shrinkage. 
So assembly inspection is also important in the sun casting. When you are doing engineering parts, all the requirements are very similar. Assembly also it is important for cutting and grinding feasibility. When the tree assembly is there, you should also consider that feasibility for cutting in the cutting machines. And uh, it also need uh, some cutting reference in investment casting also like uh, sand casting where a bigger riser or the profile of the job is such that it should be taken care. Then humidity control in pattern in uh, cell uh, curing area. And the drying time is also important. That is depending upon the position number of fans in the cell room, quantity of cell in the given size of the room, rack position, near or far to the fan. <laughs> and geometry of the shell, job and deep shells and indicate shapes where surface is less, need longer drying time. So drying time consideration also should be given. If the molds are not dried properly, de-waxing time it will be a problem and will lead to crack. And slurry dyeing also you have to consider for the seasonal change. Depending on the seasonal change and humidity, you have to prolong the drying time. Ratna sir, please mute your uh, mic, sir. It disturbs others. Uh huh. Okay. Some of the tips for uh, during the process for high volume production that keep the eye on the trends, the single data that is for the process control points, pH, SiO2 can make a chart and study and regularly monitor what is the changes going on depending upon the season then you have to alter see on top of housekeeping issue for example stagnant water in a potential source for bacteria so make sure that wax cooling bars are changed frequently bacteria in the wax room can be carried into cell room and contaminant in the peripheral keep an eye on the temperature variations in the cell room and do not add few additional moles into the preheat oven well, this may potentially cause cell damage because impact the amount of oxygen available to burn the organics out of the cell. So, if there is a space, don't put extra cells in the firing place. Slurry control chart, follow slurry control charts to monitor the trend. That is, for example, the silicate conduct will climb due to variation target, more than the target as you to. Clearly, about 1 to 2 percentage point below the center point of the dip tank is important. This cast will be also changed during continuous coating. So then you have to monitor the viscosity also. And pre wet is also monitored. And educate the operators. When they use the water, change the water, binder, binder polymer, adjustment, when they have to do what is the frequency or what is the taste. And also monitor and control the makeup slurry as closely as the dip tank. And make optimize the makeup slurry formation so adjustment to the dip tank are minimal. And for shell cracking and control. Metal penetration casting, gas piping, ceramic inclusion to the cracking and breaking of shells. So these are the defects due to shell crack. So remedy is binding up dried shells with the binding wire before firing, covering with the ceramic cool to into the strength and corners where crack or leak expected. Shells bound with binding wire before final coat. Shell cracking is the result of stresses. The stresses are related to properties of wax. And geometry of the 
pattern and orientation in the rigging that is assembly shell formulation and process control the de-waxing process and mold and these are the reasons for cracking of shells and related defects because that when the shell crack inside internally nobody can see then this broken ceramic will come as inclusion in the casting stress developed during wax de-waxing is the cause for shell cracking and some of the points to optimize the shell strength measure slurry ingredients do not dust and quantities the pre mix new slurry is in a separate tank before adding them to production tanks all of enough time for adequate wetting of refractories add small amount of fresh slurry frequently to the production tank to minimize effect from any unwetted material whenever possible add fresh slurry and solvent to make up for evaporation losses at the end of the work day maintain level of slurry in tank to prevent air ingestion when propeller mix mixers are used make certain that the slurry tank mixing is adequate to keep refractories in uniform suspension do not use excess mixing energy control slurry tank temperature within 3 degrees centigrade to the ampere manage slurry consumption of less used primary tanks complete replacement of each 60 days change that slurry before 60 days that is the suggested thing for the better quality control slurry viscosity ph and soluble sio2 binder phase in the binder phase use a slurry whose rheology will produce a shell of uniform thickness and remain wet long enough to apply stucco maintain grain size and distribution control stucco control relative humidity to 45 60 and temperature plus minus 1.5 1.5 degree during the shell drying process these are the just tips which will help to have a uniform and consistent quality in the final product measure modulus of rupture and shell weight on a routine basis to determine the strength trends so whether our shell is having enough strength to withstand the liquid metal weight without any cracking or any leakage so we have to measure and see the trend not just the testing and leaving it we should have a trend chart and monitor and shell bulging is happen in cases where the thickness is more in the casing or larger area or weight of the casing increases then in suitable shell thickness standards to be arrived based on the casing thickness or you can decide add some stiffness to fit the bulging while coating and washing of shells normally they say washing is not advisable so it leads to some gas related defects but when some of the components it is must then you have to wash but ensure proper breathing and before firing then storage of shells then proper planning to make the production plan so that the injection and coating and drying time are properly planned sample pore is not required and some of the points for uh, cost calculation which i thought these are the things important for fond people when any complex dies are handled or die assembly wax seal placing dwell time and de assembly of dies taking huge amount of time depending on the die design and co component the circuit time is increased compared to the smaller die for single piece components so when you are coating or doing casting all these points you have to consider there should be a calculation system in your casting system to consider all these changes and we are always have a bend or warp in the investment casting then we have to consider the cost for bend removal and any uh, gauging required to meet the dimension tolerance 
then gauging time, the grinding of the casing as per gauge, or bend removal using the gauges, all that will add a cost and time. So these things we have to consider. And some components, we cannot be straightened in the room temperature, then we have to preheat and do bend room. That is also there in some of the cases that by the way I come across. So all this you have to consider during quotation or casting time. Or you should add a point in your casting sheet. And casting weight and shell weight to be verified or audited periodically or some boundaries I seen they are do every dispatch. So that will allow you to see the variation in the casting weight and also the shell weight, whether the weight is coming as per our agreed weight or not. So the variation in shell room, nobody can see by visually. So the final audit is only by weight. The any weight variation, we have to consider and monitor. And same thing, I already explained that drill hole in the ash cast, people prefer, but we are landing into problem because of TCD variation and uh, and sometimes there is a defect in the holes which cannot get fed properly. But customer wants Pascal hole and we also want without defect. So those kind of situations we should plan and explain and change the dice or not accept as casuals. So I think that's all today's subject. If anybody wants any other questions or any other extra thing, I can share in the next session. Any doubts? Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, right. So, so thank you all participants for uh, active participation in this webinar. So, likewise, IF Chennai chapter is conducting the webinars in every Saturdays. We share the information to the concern industries. So thank you, thank you, one and all, present here. Thank you. Thank you, thank sir. You. Thank you very much.